Hello and welcome back to the ground perspective and in this video I'm going to be going through my plate carrier setup. Uh, so I've made some changes to my plate carrier. This is also a completely different plate carrier uh, so this video will also serve as a, uh, a baseline for the Marine Corps issue Gen 3 plate carrier and how to make it work a little bit better for you. Um, a lot of people are going to think I'm crazy for saying this, but I don't think this plate carrier is all that bad. It works fine. Um, it just has some weird quirks to it that are unlike any other plate carrier on, on the market. And if you watch the uh, MAR Syscom, uh, the systems command, the video on the plate carrier, like they go, they go through why it has those features. They kind of tried to make this plate carrier like... They tried to make a catch-all solution for a vest that can have plates or not have plates and can be set up in a bunch of different configurations, armored, unarmored, slick armor, and like LBV setup configuration. Um, personally, I think that that solution to problems is never a good solution. As a guy that actually uses and wears the gear, I would rather just have a nice place a nice plate carrier and a nice chest rig instead of a combination of both but from the big military standpoint i understand why they would want to have one piece of equipment that they can issue to everyone and it would work okay for everyone um, but all that being aside i'm going to go through my plate carrier and why i have it set up the way i have it set up so uh, this is a size medium uh, this has soft armor in it, and it has the medium, uh, the issued ESAPI plates. Um, and you know the military plates are kind of heavy. There's a lot of there's a lot of lighter civilian plates on the market. Uh, with this plate carrier, with water and plates and all of it installed, um, it's about 28 pounds, and that's without ammo. So every additional loaded rifle magazine is about a another pound so it could already be looking at up upwards of 35 to nearly 40 pounds um when this thing is fully loaded out with with magazines and munitions and things like that and comm gear and whatnot radios and all kinds of stuff so just a baseline i know that that's going to sound crazy heavy to a lot of the civilian people that watch my channel and the reality of it is, is it doesn't really matter what it weighs, you know, you have to carry what you have to carry. And sometimes, you know, there's no way to get around it. Um, but I've already gone through the video on my belt here. Um, I made some changes to my belt and I made a lot of changes to my plate carrier. So that's why I'm doing the, uh, up, the update video here uh, to talk about my plate carrier with, with my belt. It's very seldom that I wear one or the other. Almost always when I'm wearing my belt, I'm wearing my plate carrier too, and I'm almost never wearing my plate carrier without my belt. I'm a ground infantry guy. I'm, I'm, not, a, uh, I'm not a mobilized or a mechanized guy, so having a big belt isn't really a problem for me, but for you guys that are in trucks more often, then something like this probably wouldn't work for you as well. Uh, but yeah, the only time that I'm either wearing one or the other or like one without the other is if I'm, you know, in some part of a safety structure for a range or, or, or whatnot. But other than that, like, oper like, like operationally in training, um, I'm usually wearing both of them together. So I have my belt here. I've got a whole video on, on my belt and all the stuff that goes in my belt. So if you're watching this video and you're thinking that I'm missing a bunch of shit, um, go check out the belt, the belt video. And then that'll probably make a little bit more sense once you see both of them together. But this video isn't about the belt. I have the belt on the table because there's a couple things in, in the belt that, that I'm going to mention throughout the video. Um, anyway, starting on, starting on the front here, um, my magazines, my magazine placard, I have the Shaw, Shaw Concepts Arc V3 V3 placard. Underneath it, I have one of the Shaw Concepts, the Velcro adapters, uh, because the front of the plate carrier is is a is a Molly. Um, 
And I know that a lot of Marines out there, I know that you can tuck the, like the Molly portion inside the plate carrier. And then you just have, have the Velcro on the front. But the thing that I don't like about that is once you do that, the only thing that's holding like your Molly panel thing in here are these little tweed shoulder pads or these like shoulder retainer things. And I really wouldn't trust the long-term durability of those. Uh, so I like to have the Velcro attachment and I just put the Velcro adapter on there. Um, you can see that in that in the placard, I, ca I carry four magazines, uh, all of them with the brand new Shaw, Shaw Concepts quad ram insert. Uh, the quad ram insert is basically the only elastic insert that I would recommend. And it's because it has the Tigris on both sides of uh, the magazine, which makes it really easy to re-index magazines. I don't use a dump pouch. I don't like dump pouches. So being able to re-index magazines very quickly is something that's important to me and very easily without any other need of retention like, like bungees or Kydex. Uh, the uh, elastic in inserts from Shaw Concepts, the RAM insert has been great for me. I've never lost a magazine. Uh, this one specifically, or, or the quad one is pretty new. I've only had it for a couple weeks now, but I had a triple ram insert for, I don't know, probably a, a, a year to two years and I never lost a magazine. And I know that Shaw Concepts makes good stuff. So I'm, I can say without doubt that the quad ram is gonna perform just as well as, as uh, the triple ram did. Um, on the front, I have a blue four skier 10 speed. Uh, I have a triple and, uh, you know, you can put magazines inside these, which, you know, I brought a couple aluminum mags out to demonstrate that, you know, you can put mags inside these. I usually never use them for magazines though. Um, I almost always use these for random bullshit, like chem lights, pens and other things. So, but I, I like having the capability to put magazines in there because, you know, you never know when you're going to want to carry more magazines. It's very likely that, you know, I'm going to want to carry more magazines. So having a pouch that kind of does a couple things is a nice thing to have. Um, and I find that I'm always using this for something or the, or, or, or the other, you know, a shot timer, something like that, or chem lights extra pens, pencils, maybe I stuff a tourniquet in, inside there or something like that. Um, go, going down a little bit on the bottom of, of, of uh, the placard, I keep a tourniquet. This is a cat gen seven. Um, if you're looking at, at the tourniquet and you're like, wow, that thing's beat up. It's time to replace it. Yeah, it totally is. Uh, but this is, you know, it's a training tourniquet, right? I, I have a stash of nice tourniquets and then I have a stash of training tourniquets and you know, I use the, I use the, I use the training tourniquets for training and I use the, the good ones for, you know, other stuff. Right. Um, on the bottom here, I have the onward research simp pouch. Um, this is the only dangler that I really like, and maybe it's just a problem with my body proportions, but I can't use big dangler pouches. They just get in the way of my legs. And um, a lot of times with big dangler pouches, they can be pretty uncomfortable in, in uh, the prone. So I really like the Simp pouch because it's small and it allows me to carry just some stuff that I want to carry with me, but I really don't have any other room for. Um, what I normally use this for is for signaling stuff. So I've got a, a couple chem lights on the front of it. On the inside, I have an air panel. This is a two foot by two foot air panel by uh, Velocity Systems. And I got a couple chem lights on the front. Obviously with chem lights, you know, the more you expose them to UV light and things like that, you're, you're going to have to replace them. And then on the inside here, I have an IR chem light rigged up with a buzz saw. Um, the SIM pouch is also, also large enough to hold a smoke grenade in. So I haven't done that yet personally, but... Um, you know, if you need to carry an extra smoke grenade, you can put one there. On the bottom, it's got tourniquet loops. I never put a tourniquet inside there, uh, but 
it does have tourniquet loops for if you would like to carry a tourniquet there. Um, that's the front. Now onto the admin pouch here. So I, so I previously said that I don't like admin pouches and I still really don't, but I kind of, I had a, uh, I was running the range one time and I had a bunch of stuff inside the simp pouch and I went to pull my air panel out and I got my air, my air panel out, but I lost like all of my other shit. And then I had to go back and try and find it. So I was kind of like, okay, I need something else because I can't be losing shit. So I got the Ferro Concepts small admin pouch and it's really nice. It's one of those ones that's kind of angled. So like it doesn't get in the way of magazines. I can still draw and re and re index magazines with it up there. And inside of it, I just keep a couple things. If you put too much shit inside this, then it will get in the way, but I keep it pretty empty. I have a whistle inside there, which can be useful for audio signals, it's camouflage paint. Cause of course, and then I have a signal mirror and, and one of those Ranger cards. If you're not familiar with the Ranger cards, they're really cool. Um, basically, it's just a card and it has a graduated range scale on there in 100 meters. And then it has an 18-inch string or, yeah, I think it's 18 or might be 14. But you, but, but you put this end inside your mouth and then you hold this out with the string tight and then you can range in increments of a hundred meters, a man, a IMF container, or like a shipping container. And then you can range like this one is a average SUV. And, uh, so pretty cool. Definitely could, could be, could, could be useful for like quick ranging for fire missions or something like that. You know, you get a direction, you get a distance. And then, uh, from there you, you figure it out. Right. Um, so that's what goes inside there. Uh, the last thing I'll say about the Ferro admin pouch is uh, if you do put stuff, it's got chem light loops or like loops for Sharpies here. If you do put stuff in inside there, I did notice that with that stuff there, it did start to get in the way of pulling magazines out. So I keep that empty. Uh, the, the placard itself is attached with Velcro and, and uh, buckles that's integral to the plate carrier. And then up on the front here, I have... A Garmin GPS just ran through the Molly. Uh, the, the thing about Garmin's, right? I've talked about them a couple times. They can be tracked, spoofed, targeted, things like that. So, if I were doing real life stuff, I would never be using a Garmin. Um, it's just for training stuff, really, uh, because a lot of times we don't get that encrypted, like the military GPSs for training, uh, for whatever reason. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but it is what it is. So I have a Garmin in there to fill in for that when I uh, would have that in real life, right? Then I have a push to talk here. This is a Disco 32 that is gonna connect to my sword and headset and then my, my radio and attachment here just rides inside the radio pouch. Uh, one of the features I really do like about the Marine Corps Gen 3 is that the, uh, this space in between like the plate bag and like the Molly part of the plate carrier is uh, it's really useful to stuff crap in. So inside here, I got a map inside there. Um, I've put some pretty large things inside there. And if you know, you really need to put something large, you can unclip your shoulder strap, pull one side open and then stuff that down in there. And then you can, redo it or you know you can just come in from the side which is what i normally do and it goes right in there hides away pretty nicely um but yeah i got a map in there uh my push to talk and then my camelback hose is all so all of my stuff like all of my I don't know, like my radio, my Garmin, and my Camelback hose is all routed over my left shoulder. I fire my rifle with my right hand and my right shoulder. So I keep absolute, absolutely nothing on this side of the plate carrier. I see a lot of people that like put other stuff 
where their stock needs to go, like tourniquets or like Garmin's, push to talks and things like that. And uh, you really need to have this area slick and clear so you can get a good cheek weld with your rifle. Um, so that's some, something to think about there. Uh, now we'll go on to the side. So the cummerbund that I'm using is the uh, Shaw Concepts Arc V, V3, V2 V cummerbund. It's their newest cummerbund. I really like it. Um, it has some it has some rigidity to it. It has Tigris in the top and the bottom row, but it's tapered in the back here, and uh, it keeps it out of the way and it gives room for my rifle speed reload magazine, which is on the left side of my plate carrier. But either way, uh, it gives room for it, so it's not like you're not having to deal with like the rifle magazine that's constantly poking your cummerbund and making your and making your plate carrier fit all fucking weird. But uh, on the outside of the cummerbund here on both sides, uh, it's attached with first spear tubes. On the subject of attachment, uh, I have my cummerbund attached directly to my placard. I see a lot of people that, that like to run placards and that's fine because placards are cool, but uh, they run their tubes under their placard. And the only thing that's like holding their placard down is Velcro. And I just, you know, call me over, over, over cautious if you want, but I just don't think that that is a good idea. Um, maybe it's because of older plate carriers, like, like the Marine Corps Gen 2, every time you bend over with six magazines and your uh, whole front flap comes undone. Um, but I'm just, I like to attach the, the, the placard di directly to the cummerbund. So that's never that'll never be a problem for me that like my placard is going to be doing weird shit when I'm, when I, I'm moving in weird ways. So I have the cummerbund attached di directly to the placard and I've never had problems with it on the front on both sides. I have a T3 gear tourniquet pouch and I like these tourniquet pouches because they're completely enclosed and they protect the tourniquet. Well, um, I have three, I have three, I have three tourniquets on my plate carrier and I have one on my belt for a total of four. Um, call it, you know, too many, call it whatever you want. I'm going to carry four because I have the room for them and uh, it's better to have them and not need them than need them and not have them. Um, the arc cummerbund allows me to do that because the tube is kind of recessed into the cummerbund. So you get Molly over the top of the tube which is one of the problems that I ran into when I first got issued this plate carrier was I was using the cummerbund that came with it. And I had this big gap right here where my radio previously was like nice and tight up here. And now my radio is like back here because of the distance between like the added space with the cummerbund and the tube connection. And it was making it really difficult to get my radio and you get other stuff that's on my cummerbund. So the Shaw Concepts Arc Cumberbund is a much needed upgrade, in my opinion, for the Marine Corps Gen 3, especially if you're a guy that, you know, isn't just a rifleman and you actually have to run stuff on your sides. That's important. So I got one tourniquet there. Then I have a Spiritus Spud Pouch. Um, spud Pouch is pretty cool. I, 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 I have a magazine inside there now, but this magazine is the first magazine that I normally load and goes into my rifle. Um, so that pouch is normally empty and I know it might not make a lot of sense to have an empty pouch on your plate carrier. Like, Oh, it's just added weight. It's added bulk, things like that. But the amount of times that I've been given a piece of equipment right before I do something and have nowhere to put it is more times than, than I could care to count. And I've always seen the value in having extra like empty pouches. It's the same reason why I have the gist pouch on my belt and the spud pouch on my plate carrier. The spud is a really versatile pouch. Uh, you can adjust the height of the flap. It also comes with like a shock, shock cord retainer. And the main thing that I would be using the spud for would be for a, a dagger or, you know, it's large enough to fit a smoke grenade with some extra space. So I know that it's going to be able to fit a dagger and it's got a loop on the inside here to tie a dummy cord down to. So I never lose it. 
Uh, but yeah, so the spud pouch, really, it's a really nice pouch. Um, haven't had any problems with it. And like, you know, the pangolin flap is, is pretty cool. It has some stretch to it so it can cover over the edges of items and things like that. Um, now on the inside of the cummerbund, or actually I'll talk about this first. So this is a HSGI, the, the, the bleeder blowout kit pouch, whatever the fuck it's called. Um, and inside here, well, hang on a second. This is different from the last time you saw a video on, on my plate carrier. The last time you saw a video I had, I didn't have the spud pouch yet, but I had a double magazine pouch there for the same purpose for extra items. And then I had nothing back here. I felt the need to add this because with the way that my belt is rigged up now, my IFAC is inside of my butt pack here. So I'll take it out and show you that my IFAC is now inside of my butt pack, right? It's inside of insert. And even this is different since the last time you saw a video on my belt, because, you know, like I said, during, during that video, it's a work in progress, but I felt the need to put that on there because I wanted to have some medical on, on my plate carrier because I felt like the medical that was on my belt, which was my only medical at, at the time was a little bit too hard to get to in a like real fast scenario or like in like a self aid to scenario. Um, because it's got buckles, it's behind me, I have to reach in and pull it out instead of like just being able to pull a, to pull a cord and, and then my whole med kit is in my hand. So I felt the need to put some stuff on there and I thought that this pouch would be a good way to go. And so far it's been great. The only thing that I had to do with it is I had to flip the clips that actually attach it to the cummerbund. Come on. I had to flip these clips that actually attach it to the cummerbund upside down because they were digging into my side a little bit on the bottom here. And that's something I do with a lot of the pouches on my cummerbund as I flip the clips upside down. Um, so yeah, they're flipped upside down. Now it, it, it attaches the same way. They're exactly like malice clips. Um, but yeah, so I've got shears in the back here. Shears are a great thing to have. Um, they're not, you know, when you're trying to cut clothing off of someone, if you've ever done, if, if you ever done training with like with dummies or, or whatnot, like it, it's very difficult to try and cut pants or trousers or shirts off of someone with a knife. There's a very high probability that you're going to poke that guy or you're going to cut that guy. So having shears is kind of a necessity. Um, and you know they're useful for a lot of stuff. You know you you you'd be surprised how how many times that you use just a good pair of scissors um, when when you have them, right? Um, but inside, you undo the buckle, and I have it marked with red tape so everyone can see that there's medical stuff in, inside of it. And then you pull on this, and the whole pouch, the whole the whole contents comes out. Um, I've done something a little bit different with the contents here. I put all of it inside of a, a big Agnes, um, tent footprint bag because I didn't like how I would pull it all out and all my shit would be everywhere. I liked to be, be able to pull it out in one package like that. And then from there I can go from there, you know, with that. So I'm going to take this away, put that back inside of my belt. But um, the stuff I keep inside here, I obviously keep keep the shears. I've got three tourniquets on 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 my plate carrier, but um, I keep some gauze. I keep a roll of duct tape. Really, just essential stuff. A small pressure dressing. Um, I keep one of those really big packs of combat gauze, and then I have a twin pack of chest seals that all fit into that pouch, which, you know, most people would look at that and be like, Hey, that's a full IFAC. That's all you need. I, I would disagree. There's a lot of other stuff that, you know, pretty common I I injuries that you should be accounting for, but this covers a lot of the March al al algorithm here with the, with the addition of the tourniquets. 
And uh, I think it's good enough in a uh, self-aid scenario. So that all goes inside there. It's in a good position because I can still wear heavy like ruck shoulder straps with it, but it's not like underneath my shoulder strap and I can still reach it with, with, with my uh, arm, undo the buckle, pull that tab, and then the whole thing comes out into my hand. Uh, so yeah, now on the inside of the cummerbund, I have the Shaw Concepts, the cummerbund buckets. If you're not picking up on it yet, uh, this, this plate here pretty much got the Shaw Concepts treatment. It's got just a bunch of shit from Shaw Concepts because they're a great company and they make really good gear. Um, but yeah, so the side buckets, they attach with Velcro, like one wrap tape that goes through. And then, you know, you can put side plates inside these. I don't have side plates inside right now because I don't have side plates to put in there. But I keep one magazine inside of each side of my cummerbund. So I've got four on the front and one on both of my sides. And then I have the magazine that gets loaded up first and put in my gun inside the spud pouch. And then I have another magazine on, on my belt for a total of eight. Uh, I think that's a good place to be at, but just the elastic insert here, magazine comes out and then goes back in pretty easily with uh, the vest on. Sometimes this little shock cord loop gets in the way, but not that bad. Um, and yeah, really useful. And, uh, I don't feel it at all, especially with the addition of, uh, the cummerbund side buckets, the ad additional padding there makes it really comfortable. So that pretty much covers my right side. I will spin it to my left side here. So again, uh, T3 gear tourniquet pouch with a tourniquet in there. Uh, then I have my radio pouch. This is a LBT radio pouch. It's one of the really old ones. They used to have like a snap. You can still see the snap right there. I took that off because it was a pain in the ass to use when you actually have a radio in there. And I modded it with some shot cord and a buckle. So the radio goes right in there and then I click right there and I got a little bit of stretch for some of the larger radios, but if it's a one, five, two, great. Um, I've never been a proponent of putting radios on the inside of my cummerbund. I know that a lot of guys are, and I understand the reason for it. It keeps it nice and tight to the body and it's very comfortable and it allows you space on your cummerbund, things like that. I get it, but I've never been a proponent of doing it because one, for me, it's not comfortable. I don't like doing it. And the thing about like the military radios is they get super fucking hot. And two, uh, the frequency and the frequency at which you, you actually need to pull that radio out of the pouch and fuck with it because it's fucked up because military radios are great. Um, you need to change channels or, you know, check timing with someone else. So, uh, that's a big reason why just a ease of use thing. I understand like, you know, if you're doing quick quick missions like raids and things like that. Like it makes a lot of sense to just have it set, keep it inside the cummerbund and then do, do your mission with it. But in the type of missions that I'm going to be doing as a regular infantryman, uh, I'm going to be carrying that thing for multiple days. And I really don't want to have to deal with pulling it out, like out of the pouch, fixing it, and then having to undo my whole cummerbund to put it back in, put my cummerbund back on top of it. That's, that's just not something that I'm, that uh, I'm, that I'm trying to fuck with. Um, I don't use an antenna relocator or like a cattail antenna I have in the past. And to be honest, I've had mixed luck with them. They haven't always worked the greatest for me. And I found that the, that the radio antenna, like the SL3 antennas that actually come with the radio have always worked the best. And, uh, I keep my radio on my weak side. That way the antenna and any of the other accoutrements that go with the radio aren't in the way of getting in the, sh of, aren't in the way of my shoulder when I'm trying to shoulder my rifle. It's never in, in the way of me reloading my rifle or um, it, it, it's just never in the way in, in general. And I've found, you know, I've ran the radio on both sides. I found that on my strong side, it doesn't fucking work because of the antenna and 
like running radios on, on my back or like in a position where I couldn't reach them is not going to be feasible for all the same reasons that I just talked about, like the amount of times that you're going to need to pull that thing out and fuck with it. So really that leaves one spot and it's front of uh, the cummerbund on the weak side. And I've never had problems with it. It's always worked out fine for me. So I would really recommend that. Um, but obviously, you know, you can do whatever you want. I'm just a guy on the just a guy on the internet, right? Um, same cover bun, same setup with the side bucket and the one magazine inside. Uh, now, I, this is also, a, this is going to be different from the last time I had a video on my plate carrier. And uh, this is just a double mag pouch from Tactical Taylor. You can see that I did the same trick where I turned the mouse clips upside down so they're not bugging me. And uh, this, is an, this, this is another one of those pouches where it's usually empty, but it's saved for munitions and other things like that. So inside, for example, I have a smoke grenade, you know, a spent smoke grenade. Um, you could put anything you want inside there. You could put, you know, two more magazines inside there if you wanted to. Um, works out fine, right? But uh, usually it's going to be reserved for munitions, smokes, other types of grenades, CS grenades maybe. Um, if you're training arty sims, flashbangs, things like that. Uh, just through my experience, just like I've said, I found that it's very useful to have empty pouches because you're always going to be carrying more shit than you thought you were going to be carrying. Um, yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, on to the back. So on the back, I have, this is going to be different since the last time you saw a video on my plate carrier as well. I have a Haley Strategic flat pack. Uh, this is the regular flat pack, not the flat pack plus, which I think that the flat pack plus is fucking humongous. It's just about as big as anything I would ever want to have on, on my back. Um, but yeah, so I have the flat pack here and the main thing that I use it for is hydration pouch. Uh, and I know what you're thinking. $160 for a hydration pouch is a bit fucking gnarly. Uh, but the reason why I have the flat pack is because it's not just a hydration pouch. You know, I can put a three liter bladder inside of it, even though Haley strategic says you can only put a 1.5 inside here. That's bogus. You can, you can, you can put a three liter. But I can expand it quickly and easily to carry a bunch of other bullshit, basically, you know, and I can, for example, right, I'm, I'm going out on an OP and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be out there for at least that night and I'm not going to carry a whole lot of other shit with me and it's going to be fucking cold. So maybe I expand this out. I throw a jacket in there. I throw a poncho liner in there. I throw my tarp in there. And uh, it's not a big deal because, you know, I'm not going to be carrying a ruck when I'm doing this. But it, when I am carrying a ruck, I take the bladder out. I collapse it down. I take all the shit out of it. And then it fits fine with a ruck and a proper frame. Tactical Taylor Malice frame is basically should be standard issue. Uh, I don't know why it's not, but it's definitely the best frame to wear with body armor. But yeah, I zip that back up or I, or I collapse it back down and then it works out fine as a uh, hydration carrier. And I'll show you the three liter bladder thing, right? You open it up. As you can see, I have a three liter bladder. I think the reason why Haley Strategic says that you can only put a one and a half, half liter bladder is because they want you to put it inside of this compartment here. And that is definitely not, not big enough to put a three liter bladder in, but I just put it in the main compartment and uh, you can totally fit a three liter bladder inside there with room to spare even. So that's why I like it. I know it's a pretty penny. I actually got it for free from one of my friends in a trade. So, you know, maybe if I had to pay for it myself, I would feel differently about it, but Either way, I, I, see the, I see the capability and I see the versatility in something like this. And I think it's definitely something worth considering. 
obviously you can always throw on a salt pack, but either way. Uh, and then this bottom pocket also extends out as well. So you could put smoke grenades in there, frag grenades, what it, whatever it may be. So that's going to zip all, 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 the, all the way back up. Um, it's got some long pockets. This, this pocket here runs the full length of the bag. What I've used this for is like long zip ties or zip cuffs or something like that. Uh, and then on the front here, it has another smaller, smaller pocket, which I actually keep some stuff in. Uh, I keep a small repair kit for my plate carrier. Um, I keep a shoulder strap assembly with a buckle because it'd be a shame for, the, for, for that to break. So I keep a shoulder strap assembly there and then I keep a male and a female first 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 spear tube connection um i've never had had one of these break i've talked to guys who said that they've had theirs break and that's enough for me to think it's worth carrying one uh so i've got the full accoutrement set there and then i got the shoulder strap assembly one of the spare back buckles here and then a full strap and uh the female buckle that attaches on the front. Right up here. And that extra one of those. So I guess I talk about now the reason why I made these changes to my plate carrier. Um, so I was by no means unhappy with the way my kit was set up, but the changes that were made to my plate carrier really came from the changes that I had made to my belt and thinking about the future and what kind of wars that we're going to be fighting in is no longer a counter insurgency war. It is a conventional war where you are going to have to be capable of sustaining yourself for, you know, longer than you expect basically in a nutshell. Right. I don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but I know that, you know, it's not going to be anything like we've done the past 20 years. So I needed to put some sort of butt pack on my plate carrier. I needed to carry some things, some basic things, weapons maintenance kit, some warming layers, some extra food, some survival gear. I had no room for that on my plate carrier. So I couldn't put that on my plate carrier. It had to go on, on my belt. So that means I have to now keep my IFAC inside here, which means now I need to have medical on my plate carrier so I can get, get, get to it quickly. I got to keep other stuff inside here. It means I need to run suspenders. Now it means I need to, you know, do all kinds of different things that I wasn't doing previously. I wanted to have some more ways to carry munitions, smokes. Um, I previously planned on carrying smokes inside the gist pouch. And now I have a little bit of stuff inside the gist pouch. I have some chem lights, I have a lens pen, I have a flashlight, I have a head lens or a headlamp, things like that. I, I, I can still carry one smoke grenade inside there if I needed to, but I'd really like to be able to carry two frags and two, and two smoke grenades. And now I couldn't do that, right? So now, you know, I, I, I can still carry two frags. I can carry one smoke there and I can carry one smoke inside of my spud pouch or dagger smoke grenade one smoke in, in uh, the gist uh, you like you get you get what i'm getting at right you 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 need to have a setup that can do a lot of things as a infantryman you don't have the luxury of always knowing exactly what your mission is going to be so you kind of have to set your gear up in a manner that allows you to do a lot of things at once while still not being overly, overly cumbersome and fucking crazy. Uh, so that's, this kit is the best um, mock-up that I could do to make that mission possible. Um, yeah. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was uh, educational on the Marine Corps Gen 3. Um, like I said in, in the beginning, it's not that bad. It's a huge step up from the gear that has been issued in the past. You know, me as a guy 
in the military, the time that I'm in, I can't imagine being a guy that was in the mil that that was in the mil in the military in like 2000 fucking three, four or five. And the type of shit that those dudes were running around in was like full, like monkey suits. It was crazy, you, you know? Uh, so I'm definitely very fortunate to have this play carrier here. Cause, uh, cause I recognize that it could be a lot worse anyway. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.